Hey y'all, it's Friday. It's not Friday, it's Saturday. Today is Saturday because I had to switch days with Z because of my school schedule. I did not post a video about last week's topic to this channel because of my schedule, but I did make a video about my own personal experiences with mental illness that I posted to my personal channel, which I will link to in the description. Um, trigger warnings on that and everything's at the beginning. So this week's topic is privilege. Even though there's a lot of misconception around what privilege is and isn't, I thought it'd be best to start off with a definition. According to Google, privilege is a special right, advantage, or immunity granted or available only to a particular person or group of people. I feel like that's pretty accurate. There are a lot of misuses of the word privilege where people think that um, to have privilege or to experience oppression is based on whether people are nice to you or not. And even if people aren't nice to you, and even if they're not being nice to you because of a specific group that you belong to, it is still not necessarily oppression if it does not reinforce a special right, advantage, or immunity granted or available only to a particular person or group of people. So, given that queer people do not experience a special right, advantage, or immunity, then them talking about straight people is not the same because they're not reinforcing anything. Oppression is a lot more than the way people treat you, it affects your life in like real tangible ways. So like there's racial privilege where people of color are far more likely to get profiled by police. That is a real life implication of their oppression. And so the special immunity that white people experience would be the immunity from being profiled by police. Granted, um, queer people and trans white people are still profiled by police, but they're not profiled because they're white. You see what I mean? Like, if a queer white person is profiled by police, it's because they're queer. It's not because they're white. Nobody's gonna profile you because you're white. That's the privilege. I heard a great quote that was, privilege is only invisible to those who have it. And I think that really gets back to the whole immunity thing that a lot of people think that if they had privilege, then they would obviously be experiencing visible examples of having advantage over other people. And a lot of the time, privilege is invisible to people who have it because a lot of the time it takes the form of immunity. Like, it's the immunity from discrimination is privilege. The immunity from racial profiling is privilege. And on and on and on, because there are countless different types of privilege and oppression systems. Also, privilege is not like a tally score, and ne neither is oppression because no way that you experience privilege or oppression cancels out any other way that you experience it. I've seen these stupid BuzzFeed articles where it's like, calculate your privilege score or something like that, and that is not the way privilege works. A lot of people think that like social justice people pick on specifically cis men as being the most privileged, but if you are a cis man who is a person of color or disabled or has a mental illness or is fat, or is under the poverty line, like those are all like ways that you can experience oppression even if you are a cis man. And the fact that you are a cis man does not cancel those out. But by being cis and male, you still have the ability to enact transphobia and misogyny by virtue of being a cis male that is not canceled out if you're a person of color or a person with a disability. Like these things do not cancel out and they don't like tally up. <laughs> So like, even though I'm a trans person, I still experience a lot of white privilege. Um, I still experience privilege by being someone who comes from a middle class family, even if I am not um, middle class myself. I have the support of my family, which is a definite privilege. I am thin, I am moderately able-bodied, and so even though I am transgender, I don't experience that much oppression like compared to women and people of color and people with more severe disabilities like immigrants and like tons of other people like I'm actually like probably in like the upper part of the privilege spectrum and the fact that I'm trans does not cancel that out. The only major ways in which I experience oppression are the fact that I'm transgender, disabled, and visibly queer. Privilege describes a relationship to oppressive power structures, not whether people are mean to you or um, like whether they have opinions or agree or disagree with your lifestyle. So like certain things that I've heard misrepresented as privilege or oppression 
is things like body modification. I've heard some people say that because they have body modifications, then that is a way that they experience oppression because they experience job discrimination or things like that. But the fact is, is that body modifications are something you can remove from yourself. They're not like a part of who you are and they're a choice that you made. So like being a person of color obviously is not a choice and it's not something that you can change. Being queer or trans or disabled is not a choice and it's not something that you can change. I've heard a lot of people say that kinksters experience oppression and people who are not into kinks have privilege for that and that is also not how oppression works because there is no power systems in place such as like financial benefits or housing benefits or like tangible physical like financial safety security education privileges that have to do with whether you are kinky or not kinky in order for something to be classified as oppression it needs to be something that creates structural disadvantages in your life that you can't control People who are disabled have structural disadvantages in their life. People with mental disabilities experience much higher rates of abuse than the general population. People of color experience higher rates of poverty, higher rates of incarceration, higher rates of police profiling and brutality. Queer people experience higher rates of assault and murder. Trans people experience higher rates of assault, murder, homelessness, job discrimination, addiction, suicide. There is structural oppression experienced by fat people and people who are immigrants, people who are lower class. These are all tangible things that affect their life in ways that they cannot control. And some TERFs might say that trans people have control over the oppression that they experience because they can just choose not to present as or live as their actual gender, but then you have to look at the mental illness, addiction, and suicide rates of trans people who are not able to do that. So trans people presenting and living as their actual gender is not a choice. It is a necessity to living a healthy life. Now, acknowledging that you have privilege is a good thing. When someone asks you to check your privilege or acknowledge your privilege, they're not saying that they want you to feel guilty for the ways that you benefit from it or that they want you to apologize or like any of those things. That's not what it means. It just means to acknowledge that you have special rights, advantages, or immunities that other people do not have. And you can use your privilege in very constructive ways. Advocacy is the most important use of privilege. Being a white person, I try to use my position of privilege to call out racism among other white people and to advocate for people of color and enhance their voices in my own community. And you can do that no matter what privilege you experience. It's really important to be an ally. If you're able-bodied, you can advocate for the rights of people with disabilities. If you're a man, you can advocate for women's rights. If you're a cisgender heterosexual, you can advocate for queer rights. Because you experience a position of privilege, people are more likely to listen to your opinion about those things. Like, sadly, people don't listen to queer people as much when they talk about their own experiences with oppression, but if you use your position as a non-queer person to enhance the voices of queer people who experience that, then that is an extremely positive use of your privilege and that really makes a difference. So privilege is not anyone's fault and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does mean that in the interest of equality, you have a responsibility to use your position of privilege to advocate for other people. I think that's about all I have to say on the topic and I'll see you next week. Peace out.